Hello and welcome to SAP on Microsoft Azure. My name is Holger Pochelt and in this video I'd like to take another look at how Excel, Logic App and Script Lab can work together. This time we'll look at how to write back data to the SAP system directly from Excel. So obviously before writing back data to the, to the SAP system we need to read the information. So for this I've created one um, simple logic app that just connects to the ES5 system, authenticates there, and returns the appropriate values back to Excel. In the second step, we'll update the information in the SAP system. When updating information to the SAP system, you always need to also handle the CSRF tokens, and you also need to look in the um, yeah, in handling e-tags to make sure that you don't override information that might have been updated by someone else in the meantime. So let's take a look. I actually want to start um, by just calling the OData service that I'm also going to use in Excel. So if I call the GW sample service here with the product ID HT1010, then you get a certain yeah, list of information properties back from the SAP system, the description, the price and, and everything. Now I can do that very same thing in Excel. So I created a little um, Excel sheet, and if I just enter the product ID here in this um, top um, left field, and if I click on read from SAP, we'll connect to the SAP system, retrieve the very same information from this OData service, and populate the fields in Excel. In Excel. Now, the interesting thing is um, I can change the data now in Excel. So for example, let's just, um, update the description, let's increase the weight, um, let's maybe reduce the price a little, and change the values of the dimension. So let's do with 10, um, depth 30, and height 50, for example. Now, if I click on Write to SAP, we are retrieving these values from Excel and updating this information in the SAP system, which means basically, if I go back um, to my OData service, and if I just um, refresh this page here, then hopefully the description will get changed and also the price and uh, the uh, dimensions of this specific product. So how did we do this? Well, in Script Lab, um, we created obviously, first of all, a few buttons um, just using HTML, and we created functions that uh, yeah, basically listen to when the get functions or get SAP data button was clicked and the write data. So let's take a look at the get SAP data. For the um, get SAP data, um, what we're basically doing is uh, we're, we uh, fetch the product ID. So I've created a small um, function that would just uh, look up a certain uh, cell um, in Excel. We would retrieve the value and return this information. And with this information, I'm actually calling um, a logic app. Um, so I'm, I'm calling this logic app. I'm passing um, the, the product ID. And as a result, I'm getting all the uh, properties from my OData service, so product ID, name, and so on. And then I'll just um, paste this information uh, in the appropriate cells in Excel. Um, why am I using Logic Apps? Well, handling um, the, the authentication, handling um, the body, the content types, and stuff like that um, is sometimes a little tricky with Script Lab. So that's why I um, yeah, did this in, in Logic Apps. So actually the read information or the lead read operations in Logic Apps is, is really fairly simple. I just create an, an endpoint. I um, look for the, the product ID in a body and, and that's it. With this information, I actually call my SAP service, this SAP ES5 system. I paste the product ID. I do the authentication here and, and that's it. In the end, I just um, return the information in a body and that's the, the JSON reply basically that I um, get back in my script lab um, operations. Um, and then I can just use this information to populate the fields in Excel. The write operation is actually equally simple. So um, if I click on uh, write SAP data, then first of all, I fetch all the information. Yeah, the function should not be called fetch product ID, it should be called fetch cell or something like that. But um, we, we just fetch all the information here in Excel. Um, then we again uh, yeah, call another logic app. We 
um, create um, the body content, so um, all the properties that I want to want to send back to the SAP system, and and that's it. In the Logic app itself, that's where um, we do all the yeah, complicated handling. So again, here's the uh, the receiving end basically. So here is the, um, the 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 endpoint with all the um, informations that I um, need to actually update the information in the SAP system. And then before actually writing information to SAP, we need to fetch the CSRF token. So that's the, the, the token that really makes sure that, um, that the call is coming from the same origin um, and, and, and so on, that we don't uh, interject and, and hijack a session and stuff like that. So, so that's where we fetch um, uh, the token. So basically in the header, um, I have to um, yeah, provide this, this fetch um, property. As a result, we'll also get information on the cookies and, and, and stuff like that. And with this information, we actually send uh, or, or perform the put operation to the SAP system. Um, again, to the, to the same endpoint, we provide the CSF token and the ETAC. Um, one last thing um, where I have to admit I, I struggled a little to get it working is the cookie handling. And by default, we need to not only pass the um, CSRF token and the ETAC to update information, but we also need to pass the actual session that was created in, in the previous um, uh, HTTP call to the SAP system. And that's where, um, when doing this with Logic Apps right now, it is a little complicated. So what we need to do is we need to um, retrieve the cookie from the first step, so this fetch token step, and then also send this information um, in the in the send update to SAP um, step. It's easier to see this actually if we switch to the code view. So here um, you can see if I scroll down here a little, um, this is the update step. So we uh, obviously take from the fetch tokens from the previous step the header, the e-tag, and we send the e-tag. And similarly, we put an um, CSRF token here, we, we, we take the token from the previous step from the header and paste it here or make it available as a CSRF token in this specific step. With the cookies, it's the same thing. So we retrieve the cookie from the previous step, from the fetch, fetch token step. And then there's one issue with Logic Apps right now that you have to harmonize, let's say, um, the, the way how the different values are separated. So I'll, I'll just use a replace function um, to replace commas and semicolons in um, uh, in the cookies, and that's basically it. So let's take another look quickly. I just uh, yeah, retrieve, let's say, one other product. Let's hope that this is available. I click on read from SAP. We get the information from SAP, and now let me just update one specific field. I click on write again. And now if I head back to the Logic Apps, I can actually um, take a look at previous runs. So this is the, the um, update operations. If I look at this one, then I can um, see what actually happened. I can see all the previous runs and I can also actually see what is what is happening. So um, this, uh, yeah, the HTTP request was received. Um, we, we fetched the tokens, so I can see, for example, uh, here in the raw out outputs, I can see uh, the, the token that was retrieved, and then um, in the in the final step, I can actually then uh, yeah see all the information uh, yeah that was pr processed basically. So this gives me also a beautiful way to to monitor what's actually happening. That um, I can I can have one central place here in Azure in the uh, in in Logic Apps to see. Um, what calls were done to the SAP system, what failed, what did not fail, what worked, um, and, and, and so on. So this gives me a great um, entry point to monitor what's actually happening. Of course, um, what I did not cover um, yet in, in, in this specific step is the authentication. Right now, the Logic App has a public endpoint, and obviously you would not like, um, not want to do this in a productive environment. Um, here you would um, do um, an OAuth authentication, most likely, um, and I'm sure we'll, we'll cover this in, a, in another video later on. So I hope this quick video of writing information from Excel back to the SAP system was helpful, gave you some inspiration, some ideas how you can do it um, on your own. Um, if you liked it, um, please make sure to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.